Creating a Flask project in PyCharm is pretty easy. All you have to do is head over to New Project, head over to Flask, say that you want to call it anything really. I'm going to give it the obvious name of Flask Demo. Give it a virtual ENV. In my case, I like using .venv as the place to start my virtual environment. That is just going to copy my Python interpreter. I have a few more settings here. I can decide what templating language I want to use, as well as what the template folder is. So once I hit create, PyCharm is going to help me install all the dependencies and libraries that I need. And with that, you should be ready to go and start your Flask project. If you want to open up an already existing Flask project, you can also go into open and PyCharm will give us a bunch of folders that we can use. So in this case, I'm going to use Flask testing zone and immediately it's going to ask us if we want to create a virtual environment. If I hit OK, PyCharm is going to go ahead and just create a virtual environment with those parameters. Once the virtual environment has been created, PyCharm will tell you that that virtual environment has been created and set for your project. Now we need to set up a run configuration. In this case, I'm going to go over to Add Configuration, head over to Flask Server, and fill in some of the details. Here, I need to provide a target and an application. First off, we are going to go over to target. Target is the name of the file that we want to run. In our case, it's autoapp.py. And the application is going to be app because that is the name of our app. Once we have all of that set up, I can just head over to run. I can click on the generated URL and that will show up in a browser with the application running. Okay, so now that we're done with running the file, let's talk about working with templates in PyCharm. Now, PyCharm already has support for working with templates in Flask. You'll notice that the templates directory is differently colored, and that's because PyCharm knows that this is the templates directory. All right, so let's create a route and call it index. And we are going to say that index is going to render a template and this template is going to be index.html. Now you'll see that PyCharm tells us that, hey, index.html doesn't exist because it highlights it. So we can quickly fix that by saying that we want a new template to be created. I can then use a live template to generate some basic HTML. I am then going to plug in the name variable that we passed into our render template and that shows up in completion. And once we're done with that, we can go ahead and run this application. That will give us a URL generated on our local host. And we can go ahead and see that our index route is indeed working because we see hello PyCharm, which is a generated HTML document. Okay, but what if you have an existing project and its templates folder is named differently? How do you configure that? Well, that's pretty easy. We can set the templates folder to some other folder. I'm being very original here. And once that's done, I can go ahead and get rid of my existing templates directory. I can say, yep, I want to delete it. And PyCharm tells me again that, hey, this index.html file that you're talking about, it doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and fix that. The first order of business is going to be to create a new templates folder. So here I'm going to create a new directory, name it the correct templates folder, and then I'm going to have to mark it as a templates folder so that PyCharm knows that this is indeed a templates folder. So now let's do what we did before. Using a quick fix, I'm going to create that index.html. PyCharm already knows what folder to put it under, and I'm going to do what I did before, which is use a live template to generate all my stuff and I am going to pull in name that is passed in to render template. And running this will give us exactly what we expect. If we go to index, we get hello PyCharm, just like we did before. Lastly, let's talk about databases. You can drag and drop a SQLite database into your database panel and PyCharm will automatically associate it with your Flask project. What does that even mean? Well, what it means is that you'll be able to get code completion inside of your Flask application. So here I'm doing select star from, and PyCharm already knows that I want to get it from movie popularity. How does it know that? It knows that because this database is associated with this project. And what PyCharm does is that it does some 
introspection on the database and it gives you code completion inside of your strings when you're injecting a language reference. This will work with just about any database PyCharm supports. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more, you can always head over to our documentation where we have a create a Flask project as well as also creating web applications with Flask inside of the documentation itself. And we hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please hit that like button. And if you want more of these, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have a question, leave us a comment below.